my tests on the other side. I was actually logging in as administrator. So, um, and I, I, I could have moved the administrator profile over to Dan, um, but I, I did a simple, uh, a simple transfer. And um, so I'm going to actually log in as administrator and, and take a look at that profile and make sure all those things came over. Okay, so um, um, now that I've done that, I have to run a command prompt. And um, I'm going to um, just type in CMD and then shift, control, enter. Uh, so that's a shortcut key in case you were not aware to uh, automatically do a, uh, an elevated command prompt. Uh, shift control enter whenever you execute any command will uh, imply run as administrator and notice I am in an administrative window. Uh, I have not copied the USMT files over to this machine so what I need to do is I'm just going to go ahead and run them over the network. So let me first just make sure I have network connectivity to that box that was win seven client uh, backslash uh, I can see that it's there because I, I, I have the autocomplete uh, working in, in my favor so I need to go to USMT and then I'm going to drill down into um, migration and then my store USMT folder and um, sure enough the easy transfer file is there now notice the easy transfer file um, I, I'm actually going to double click on it just so I can show you that that is um, 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 a file that could be used by the easy transfer wizard. So you can actually open that and look at the graphical interface and see what that file has in it. Um, in my case, we're not going to use the graphical interface to, to restore that, um, but we certainly could. Um, there's also advanced options where you could um, um, select the user, so I could, mer I could merge Blaine into Dan, or I could merge administrator into the existing user Dan. I could create a new user for Blaine, um, or I mean the default is it's going to create that user for me anyway. Okay, I do not want to hit transfer here because I want to do a command prompt and uh, kind of show you what that process looks like. Okay, and the command prompt for that, I need to actually, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and map a, uh, a network drive to that. So uh, I'm going to go net use g colon uh, whack whack win 7 client whack usmt. And then I'm going to go to the G drive. So that's the location where my executable is. I'm going to go to the G colon and show you that that is where the scan state is. Notice that's the, the scan, scan state and my load state will be there as well. Notice the MIG docs, um, XML, and uh, the, uh, the other XML files are there as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the load state. Load state. And um, for the switches on the load state that I'm, I'm going to use or are the slash C. Like before, the C option is going to tell it to continue if it has uh, non-fatal errors. And then I'm, oh, you know what? I missed the first path with it, which is the store location. And uh, the store location is going to be whack whack win seven client, whack USMT, whack uh, migration, Whack my store, and yes, I could have used the G drive on that, so I'm going to use the slash C for continue. The slash LAC, which says create local accounts um, that are disabled, and you can put an optional password in there, which I'm going to skip. And uh, I'm going to use a slash LAE, which says all the local accounts that you create with the LAC switch, uh, go ahead and enable those uh, while you're at it. and um, um, then my two configuration files, because I ran uh, two different configuration files to do the, the, uh, um, the uh, uh, to, to create the, the scan state, and those are migapp.xml. Uh, missed the I in there, so that's an I switch. I colon migapp.xml. And uh, the I switch of MIG docs dot XML. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run that. And notice I did not use the log switch, so it created a log in the current location, which is on the G drive, on the root of the G drive. 
Um, the uh, processing of this is going to be a little bit slower, primarily because I'm doing everything across the wire. I'm running the executable across the wire. I'm running um, the log across the wire. I'm running the data across the wire. So um, everything's going across the wire. It's going to be a little bit slower. Um, and it, it actually goes fairly quickly because I have very, very small profiles. So what it's doing now is it's creating the on the user Dan PC, which is um, what I called my new computer. My old one was something else. I don't remember what it was at this, at this point. Um, it created the two, new, the two users, Administrator and Blaine, if they did not already exist. Um, and it would have enabled them because that's uh, the switch that I used. And then it's going to copy the data, which is the second XML file that I gave it. And um, the data is going to do the, the data for both, uh, for both users, Administrator and Blaine. And this is almost done. We do need to do a reboot after we after we run this because uh, um, it is making quite a significant number of changes to the system. If you want uh, additional information on uh, on on this, the user state migration, or uh, if you want to go through a video or some additional information on the Easy State Migration Wizard, I'm going to have that on my blog as well. So while I'm shutting down, I'll give you that address. Uh, uh, and I'm going to start a restart here. And my blog is uh, http colon slash slash um, blogs dot technet dot com slash Dan Stoltz. And that's spelled D A N S T O L T S. You can also email me from there um, by on the I it's on the upper left hand corner. There's an email. Um, uh, link and you can email me right from my blog. Uh, you could also email me directly uh, at dstoltz at microsoft.com. However, I strongly recommend that you go through my blog to do that as uh, the uh, um, by going through the blog it will sometimes um, by not going to my blog it sometimes will get caught in my in my spam filter. So uh, to uh, to make sure that um, you get me, I would use my blog, and then uh, um, after I send you a message or reply to the message that you send me, then you'll be on my whitelist automatically. So um, that's usually the way I work that. If you do have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to me on this on the, on my blog. Uh, you'll see a uh, post for this. You can either search my blog for USMT um, uh, or sc scan down uh, to, uh, um, to uh, about September 1st where this will be posted, and you should see it there. Okay, so we do have the new the new users. Uh, administrator has been activated. Actually, since I ran the switch, I probably didn't need to manually activate that, um, enable that user. But I have Blaine, and I just want to show you. I'm going to go ahead and log in as Blaine real quick and tell you the user's password must be changed before logging in for the first time. So I'm going to say okay. I'm going to go ahead and give Blaine a password. Um, we didn't look at Blaine's beforehand, but I did want to just point one other, one other thing out. Um, in the case of Blaine, he actually had a standard Windows XP desktop background. And um, one of the things that you'll notice is I believe that will come over in, the, in that process. Um, I, I have seen some issues with that um, with the uh, Easy Transfer Wizard, but I have found that um, the user state migration tool has been just spot on every single time. So um, notice he does have uh, um, some stuff that was on his desktop. Um, he has his desktop background, etc. So let's go ahead and log in as administrator so we can take a look and um, see all the other stuff that, um, that was on the administrator's desktop. So I'm going to log in as administrator. And bear in mind, this is the first time that these, lo these users have ever been logged into this machine. Okay, so um, the first thing it's asking me to do is to give it, give it a, uh, give the password of the old computer. Um, now, uh, 